Good morning, everyone. Today is the 23rd of October, and we're going to go over the TT Scanner hot list for everyone. We're going to change things up a little bit today. We're going to start going over uh, the newest triggers, looking at some of the older triggers, and then we're going to compare. So, for example, like in this core, this is the core list, the ETF core list. We had one, two, three, four, five, six triggers last week. Two of them went flat right after we got the trigger. So we're going to take a look at where those were. The others are up. This one is up 2.34%. Uh, this one is up 1.63%. This one is off 0.49%. Uh, this one is off 1.3%. Now understand this can happen. This is part of what happens with the TT scanner. If the triggers do not confirm going forward, they will go flat very quickly. So we had a, a short signal here in IWM and a short signal here in DBB. So if we go back to here, you'll see the short signal in IWM entered at 170.22 and the short signal in DBB entered at 18.07. So understand that we were at that point, we were under a little pressure. This was from Monday morning, right after the markets opened. So there's our new trigger. So 170.22 and 18.07. And our stop here was 173, a short signal, and 1839. And you can see here, we go back to the current trigger. We're at 172.70, so we lost maybe 2%, uh, 2.1% here. And this one is 1831. Looks like we may have gotten stopped out uh, with a very small 2 or 3% loss. Understand that that's the way this system works it's going to get into a trade that looks good if it doesn't mature into an actual trend then it's going to get out of the trend and leave the potential winners still trending so you can see what happened here and again this is a good scenario here a couple weeks ago trades that did not uh, exit are continuing to trend you can see here that as of the rally here we've got a couple of negatives here but our stop level is in place to protect them we may get stopped out here with the market reversing the way it is. That happens, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got a couple of trades here with some uh, trade triggers. Uh, we've already got uh, one, three, four percent here and a couple other negatives. This is what happens during a sideways market. You will um, see some losses come into play. But remember, we have an allocation level of about 15 to 25 percent for stocks. So when you take hypothetically a 2% loss, if you're only trading 20, 25% of your allocation and you're breaking that 20, 25% across these small uh, group of stocks, hypothetically, or even hand picking four or five, it really boils down to a, a quarter of a percent or a 10th of a percent loss in your total portfolio. When the rotational modeling system confirms trending, either bullish or bearish, which right now we're mixed, then we can apply more money into these stocks to uh, allow us to capture bigger gains. So overall, we take a look at the uh, core inverse list. You can see that we had a couple of new triggers here. In fact, let's go back here. Here's the core inverse list from Monday. We had SQQ, PSQ, uh, PSXU, PSXS, QID, and Yang. All of these were new triggers under a little pressure. As of this week, the only ones uh, that are qualifying here is Chad and Yang. Everything else down in this area went flat. So all of these triggers got out. Yang is still holding up long with 9% profit. And Chad here showed up. Let me go check Chad here. This may be a new, yeah, this looks like a new trigger that happened this week. So what happened this week, ladies and gentlemen, we got a new trigger here with Chad. It's up 2.58% already. Um, and we had a continuing trigger here with Yang, a long trigger, 9.35% uh, in profits. The uh, existing triggers here, most of them are under pressure. We have this one that's two weeks old with DRV, the real estate index. This is a 13% profit, already hit its first target. And then we have a couple here that are uh, three weeks old, 4.5% uh, profit, 7.8% profit. Uh, and then these ones here, this one is really TMV, 
uh, Drixian 20 year. Uh, we've already got this one at, it looks like 46% profit from the entry price 119 to 175. What a huge move here. Already blown through our profit targets and our stop level is at 116. Uh, so it's going to be moving up. The reason it hasn't moved up so aggressively yet is because it's only four or five weeks into the trade. But boy, oh boy, what a great profit in uh, four or five weeks, right? Okay, so now let's come over to the uh, TT value list. Now, I tried to make this a little bit bigger because I've got a lot of symbols on here, and I may end up uh, condensing this down, getting rid of a couple symbols to make it bigger for everyone. Uh, but we have a number of new triggers here. If we go back to Monday's data, you see we have a new trigger here in HD. Uh, we have a new trigger here in BKH, ARE, and CLX. All of them were under a little bit of pressure as of Monday. Right now, uh, HD, BKE, maybe I'm missing one down here off the bottom. I'll have to check. But long and short of it, ladies and gentlemen, we've got these triggers have all held up. Where's that other trigger? CLX, CLX, there's CLX. Clorox got out. So Clorox exited on the trade. Um, and of the ones that are still holding up, we've got 1.46. Let me zoom in here. 1.46, 1.73, and 1.38 profit already in these trades. Have not hit our first profit target. We have uh, existing triggers uh, up here. One week old, two weeks old, three weeks old, four weeks old. Most of them, I would say, or about, about a third of them, about 35%, are in the profits. Some are holding up very well. But like I said, the markets are fairly mixed. Um, you know, we had that deep downward move. And then we've got that recovery on Thursday, Friday. So some of these triggers on a weekly basis are going to be under a little pressure. And understand that this is a time where we have to manage our capital effectively, which is why we have so much capital reserved in cash and a small amount of capital that we're actually trading with. There are still some really good trends in here. Um, you can see some of these, 6% here, 17% here. It's just a matter of catching them. Some of these could turn into some really good trends overall. They may end up getting stopped out. We'll just have to see. But overall, like I said, market is mixed. We're not seeing the same follow through that we had a couple weeks ago. Um, we may see a recovery start in the markets, which means we could be getting out of a lot of these short triggers, moving into a couple of long triggers eventually over the next couple of weeks or months. But right now, everything is kind of holding its own. And remember, most of these, when you look at them, the losses, you know, 0 0.02. Let's come in here and take a look. 0 0.02, 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.8. 5.3 here on uh, Nike. Uh, sorry, that's not Nike. That is Cisco Systems. Uh, and then we have a couple other 2.5, minus 0 0.04, minus 0 0.85, minus 1. Remember, if you're only trading 15 or 20% of your portfolio and you're taking uh, that 15 or 20% and breaking it in, into 10 or 15 trading slots, these end up being, you know, 0. Two loss. This ends up being a 0 0.4 loss. This ends up being a 0 0.08 loss. Uh, so they become much more manageable depending on how you're actually allocating your positions. So pay attention to these triggers and pay attention to how they play out. Remember the stop level here um, when you get into these new trades. So when you get into these new trades, you have the entry price here. You have the uh, current percentage, plus or minus. You have target one, target two, and then the stop level. Next, we're going to go to the raw TT scanner list. And the raw TT scanner list here, we go back to the 17th. We had a bunch of triggers here, QID, XLI, XLU, IHI, XAR, and ITB. A bullish long trigger here on QID. And then we had a bunch of short triggers here, all of them under pressure as of Monday morning. This is last Monday, a bunch of existing triggers here. Now we take a look at the current list and what you have is QID ended up going flat, IXL ended up going flat, XAR ended up going flat, and we have the leftover triggers here. These three have continued through the end of this last week 
and will now carry over into ones up here next week. And that's what happens with these triggers. They carry over. They survive the first five, seven, ten trading days without getting neutralized or go flat. Then the trends will carry over into longer term triggers. We'll have to see how everything plays out. We still have a bunch of triggers here that are holding up. You know, they're all a bit weaker because of the rotation at the end of the week with the potential Fed pivot. For all of the last triggers, they're going to be, they're going to probably be under some pressure here. But long and short of it, longer term, the system does very, very well. So when you get into the three week time frame, you start looking at uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent uh, profits. You get into longer term triggers here, we start getting into these 20, 30, 40 percent profits. You see here that XLC went flat. So let's take a look back here at XLC. There it is. XLC was up 5.24% profit, had already hit the first profit target. Uh, we had, uh, this was a short trigger. It was at $49 as of last week. It ended up getting flat from 51. Could have come and hit the, the stop. So we had our stop at 50.02 right here more than likely got stopped out with a small little profit. The, the, again, the trick behind this, ladies and gentlemen, is to let the trades execute, let them follow through, and manage our capital efficiently. Right now, like I said, the markets are in kind of a sideways mode. Let me see if I can come over here, come over here, come over here, come over here, and try to maybe show you this. The markets have been, this is the monthly chart in this sideways drifting downward and found some support last week. The FANGS index, let me find it real quick. Here we go. Had a nice little bounce. And this is what's causing our pressure last week is this rotation here as well as the rotation here in the U.S. stock market index. This is what's causing our pressure last week. You can see we've been in a solid downtrend been for many, many months, actually. This was our last little rally phase. But the news of the Fed pivot, just what I was calling for, that the Fed would likely start to readjust what's going on and move us into more of an accommodative stance, has put some pressure on the, uh, the, uh, the TT scanner list. The TT scanner list themselves, oops, wrong one, are still very, very solid. But a lot of trades are currently going to be under pressure because of this moderate rotation we've seen in the markets. We may end up seeing some of these trades end up getting stopped out for some losses. So remember, follow my advice with regards to allocation. Play it safe when the market is not trending in a uh, defined manner. Uh, cut your trading down. You can withstand moderate losses. Uh, to try to go ahead and capture some of these runners. Remember, some of these runners are four, five, six percent, which means the same rules apply. This would end up being 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0. Uh, sorry, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Um, then these would be minus 0 0.16, minus 0 0.067, uh, positive 0 0.036, positive 0 0.1 positive 0.09. So they end up being one-tenth of one percent or a half uh, 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 of a percent or maybe a full percent if we get up here into these 11. So for example, this one is four weeks old. It's the REIT trade. This 11 percent would actually be 1.85 percent profit on this trade if you were only trading one-tenth of your total capital uh, of your allocated capital of about 15 or 20 percent so it ends up being a much smaller number but there are risks when the market rotates so this is again why longer term when we get into really big trends these numbers will start to accumulate we'll be allocating more money to it so that we will be you know right now we're risking probably one and a half to two percent of our total portfolio with all of these trades, with, with whatever you select here, because we're trading such a small amount of our capital. When we start allocating more capital to it, we may be risking five and a half to seven and a half percent with some of these trades. But the idea is, is that we would get out of our trades when they're failing, we get out of them with a small half a percent or one percent or one and a half percent loss, and we let the rest of them ride up, ideally attempting to hit our first target and or trail our stop higher. 
So you can see in a lot of these cases where we have um, some downward activity, you'll see the stops actually move lower than the entry. Here's an example on this one. IYG, we entered at uh, 145, there's 405, where a stop is at 147.99. Go a little further, we got to get down into these areas. Uh, 285, short 251, 43, so here we go. Three, this one here, IGF. We entered at 43.70 on a short trade. We've already hit our first target. Our stop has moved below our entry price. We are now protected 100% profits in this trade. Uh, in this particular trade, we haven't hit that move yet. We haven't hit that move here. We have hit the move here. We entered at 23.63 for REIT. We've got 11% profit. We've hit both targets and our stop is actually below our first target. So our first target here was about a 10% target, a little less, 9%, and our stop is actually below that level already. So once we get into target one, remember, the stop will begin to trail downward or upward to protect profits. Until that time, it, tra it may trail moderately, but not super aggressive, trying to let the trade uh, mature. So again, we're in this transitional phase in the market. So again, pay attention to essentially what I'm showing you here. We're in this transitional phase. We may see a Christmas rally that may end up causing some of these, these TT scanner triggers to go flat and to roll back into cash to attempt to catch the next big move to the upside. Uh, and remember, you can still use the live trades algorithms, the rotational modeling system, the standard modeling system, and the pure alpha modeling system to find great trade setups. The idea here again is to cut your losses short, let your winners run, and trade efficiently with regards to how the markets are setting up. Now, I will go to this and try to show you that when we get into these new triggers here, okay, and let me come back over here. This is the current one. We get into new triggers. If we are in a bearish mode with bearish trending here, so for example, go back to last week. So this is a long trigger here that ended up getting stopped out. And remember, it was moderate thrusting with moderate performance. When you get into these triggers here, like this XLU, you've got deeply downward thrusting. Uh, sorry, next one down, IHI. You've got deeply down, moderately strong downward thrusting and fairly strong performance. Um, in my opinion, what you should be looking for are short triggers or long triggers that have good confirmation with regards to performance and follow through. So I'm, I look for anything that is near in this column, near, let's say uh, 0 0.75 to, to 1.02. And then over here, I look for anything that's really in the, the uh, 1.1 to 1.6 range. I wanna see some pretty consistent uh, moves. So like XAR here, it has pretty consistent performance, uh, but it has a profit factor that uh, is a little uh, vary. This one here, 1.72 to 4.0 IHI, it's got a fairly consistent profit factor and a fairly consistent win rate. This is also going to tell us that the volatility of this can be a little high. If it's a 1.7 or a 2.5 or a 10.3, this means that volatility is somewhat quite high. Um, so when we come back to the current one, you can see that XAR got out of the trade, but the IHI trade with the 1.72 and 4.0 is still in the trade with a little profits. This one here, the XLU had decent downward thrusting, but had moderate, in other words, win rate I would be acceptable with, profit factor would be a little weaker in my opinion. Remember, I'm looking for, you know, 0 0.85, 0 0.9 as a, as a fairly strong profit factor or higher. 1.1, 1 1.5, uh, 1.15, 1.17, 1 1.16. These to me are consistent. This means that it's got um, some, uh, ex some extended risk. So 0 0.64 here means it's got some extended risk. 0 0.71, with a 1.56 means that it still has some risk, but it's starting to perform a little bit better. 1.72 and 4.0 means that it has extended volatility, 
It's got a decent profit factor and it's got a decent win rate. 0 0.58 and 1.3. This means that it's got some, some extended risk and it's got a fairly decent win rate. This was the other one that got taken out, 0 0.38 and 0 0.82. That was in QID. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, it should be QID. Nope, wrong one. This is uh, XLI, Industrial Select. It's got a 0 0.38 profit factor and a 0 0.82 win rate. To me, this is a no-go. This is a non-starter. And you can look back here at the previous week's trigger. It had the same number, okay? This QID trade, a 0 0.80 and 2.4, was a very solid trade. We just got shaken out of it. This one here with the 0 0.38 and 0 0.82, which is the XLI trade, to me, this is, this is uh, really a very weak trade, okay? Overall, this is a very weak trade to try to take. This one here is a little bit stronger, 0 0.58 and 1.3, just because of this 1.3. 1.72 and 4.0, much stronger. That's a better looking trade. Uh, 6.4 and 1.4 is very similar to this one. It's, it's you know, uh, I, in other words, the way I would look at these, ladies and gentlemen, when you get these triggers, you want to remember that the thrusting pattern, the bull and bear criteria that's here, and these uh, profit factors and win rates should play into your some of your decision making. A 6.4 and a 1.4 means that in reality, I'd probably cut this down to about 40 or 50% of my real allocation. This one would probably be 100% of, of the individual 10 slots that I have because it's so solid. This one again, probably 40 or 50% because it's 0 0.58 and 1.3. This one, 0 0.38 and 0 0.82, uh, this would probably be 20, 25% of my allocation, probably not much more because it doesn't show a high likelihood of success. QID here was a, a fairly good setup, 0 0.80 and 2.4. This would probably be 80 to 100% of my allocation. And this one, 7.5 and 1.56, this would probably be 75, 85, 90% of my allocation because they look better. You've got thrusting in the right direction. You've got a profit factor nearing 0 0.75, and you've got a win rate of 1.56. So to me, that means that I have a higher success chance here than I do of this, slightly. This is the best trade setup. These, this one, this one, and this one are moderate setups, probably 50, 60% of my allocation. This one is the poorest trade setup with 0 0.38 and 0 0.82. So that'd probably be 20 or 30% of my allocation. And this one <clears throat> was moderately strong um, for a reversal signal long on a weekly system here, um, but we have to pay attention to the fact that it was in neutral bullish thrusting, meaning that we don't yet have that upward move in thrusting yet. So this again, maybe 50, 60% to see how we're going to play out in this neutral thrusting type scenario. And as we go forward, I'm going to try to point you in these directions. So as you take a look at these weekly charts here, IJX is short one week. It's uh, 1.77 and 4.75. Very solid win rate. Moderately solid downward thrusting. But if we had this at full percent, I'd feel comfortable with this. Bullish long SDS, 0 0.68 and 1.80. If I had been long and I had any profits in this trade, I might look to try to move this into a 50 or 60% allocation. This is a short trigger. 0 0.62 and 1.44. This should be around 60%, 50, 60, 70%. Same thing here, 0 0.74 and 1.63 should be around 50, 60%. Let's take a look down here for something stronger. Well, these next two or are, are three actually are quite strong. 0 0.79, 1.89, 0.97, 1.77, and oops and 1.11 and uh, 2.22, all with strong bearish uh, thrusting. These are pretty good downward uh, thrusting patterns. Then we move into some neutral. This is a neutral trigger here. Downward thrusting is good. Profit factor 0 0.51 and 1.38 would probably put me in the 40, 50% range. 
uh, 9, 0 0.98, 2.4 with downward thrusting would put me in the 80 to 100 percent range. 1.42 and 4.5 with strong downward thrusting would keep me in the 100 percent range. 0 0.89 and 1.85 with a negative thrusting would put me in the 80 to 100 percent range. And you can see how we can go through this. 4.4, 0 0.44, and 1.0 would put me in the 50, 60 percent range. 0 0.94, 1.63 with downward thrusting would put me in the 80 to 100 percent range. 1.04 and 2.14 with strong thrusting will put me in the 80 to 100 percent range. 0 0.70 with 1.63 downward thrusting probably put me in the 60 to 80 percent range. Uh, 8.5 and 1.77 with strong thrusting, almost the same as this, to put me in the in the uh, 60 to 80 percent range. 1.2. Now understand that these are going to continue to to stay valid um, as we stay in these positive ranges. So 1.21, 2.7, 1.43, 3.5. That's 100 percent range. 1. Uh, 0. 0.77 and 1.6 with strong thrusting, probably in the 60 to 80 percent range. Uh, 0 0.55 and 1.0, probably in the 40 to 50 percent range. Um, 10 and 12, 100 uh, percent. 0 0.36 and 1.22 with positive thrusting. Now this is after many many weeks, 15 weeks. This would cause me to to consider pulling some profits away from this if I had any profit. I have 31 percent profit in the trade, uh, but this move here, moving to 28, would cause me to say. Okay, if I was in at 80 or 100%, maybe I'm better off pulling some profits here, seeing what happens because thrusting has moved positive in a downward trend. It's still red, but the number is positive. So you get the idea here? Let's maybe take a look at the uh, core list right now. So of the new triggers, we have 1.06, 2.9 long with a 40% thrusting. This would probably be in the 80 to 100% range. Uh, and we have a 0 0.88 and a 2.4 long with a 62.50% uh, thrusting. This would probably be in the 80, 75 to 100% range as far as allocation. Um, when we look up here, you can see 5.8, 1.45. And the way I look at it is if they're both, like I said, up above, say this is up above 7.70 or 0.75. And this is up above, say, hypothetically 0 0.8 to 0. Uh, 0.9 or higher, preferably like 1.2, 1.1, then we have some decent trending. So 0 0.68 and, and 1.8 is pretty good. 1.3 and 3.5 is pretty good. 0 0.68, 1.5 is pretty good. Let me point out something that looks poor. Uh, find something that looks poor. So here, 0 0.52 and 1.0. Okay, this is telling you that you have a profit factor that's fairly small and a win rate that's about 50-50. Um, it's not going to be a great performer. Same thing here, 50 and 1.18. This is telling you that it's not going to be a great performer. Here's a win, a profit factor of 0 0.41, but a win rate of 2.6. Okay, what do we do in a scenario like that? Well, when we have a profit factor of 0 0.41 and a win rate of 2.67, this is telling us that we're winning basically 2.6 out of every uh, out of every uh, three trades, roughly. We're winning quite quite frequently, but our profit factor is very small, so it's not moving very big. Uh, so we, we're getting in and out with very small targets, which means we should probably want to reach for and try to target our first target level or any reasonable target in the in-trade percentage. That would be probably five, six, seven, eight percent. When you come down to uh, like this, 0 0.26 and 0 0.75, this is a non-performer. This one will not do very well for us. It means if we get a trigger in this, you want to cut your allocation down and target a two or three percent winner. 0 0.54 and one, is a moderate non-performer, probably only trade 30 to 50% of my capital. Uh, 0 0.63 and 1.5, a little bit better, probably still only 30 to 40 or 50% of my capital. Uh, 0 0.82 and 2.7, now we're getting into some, some fairly decent trending. When we get to 1.09 and 2.8 down here, 
This to me is a fair, a good number. Nine, 0 0.97, 3.2, great number. 98 and 3.2, great number. Uh, 80 and 2.4, strong, not as good as this one. You get the idea, folks? 2.2 and 5.7, great number. 3.3 uh, 3 and, and 5.5, great number. These are long triggers. They're four weeks old. We've got uh, fairly solid upward thrusting. This is 1.5 and 3.0 with fairly moderate thrusting. We've all This is a trade that's 26 weeks old, already rallied through our targets. Our stop is uh, just uh, below our entry price. Um, you know, this is a scenario where we've already come up and reach these targets, reach these targets, been above this number, these numbers throughout the life of the trade, and now the trade is weakening a bit. And this is the EUM, the E, the MSCI Emerging Markets Trade. So understand that this is weakening a bit. Um, it may continue to trend here, but it's telling us here with this weaker thrusting pattern a number that we're pretty much looking at semi-flat. This is the same thing here. Weaker thrusting right now, weaker thrusting meaning we're looking at semi-flat rollover in the market. It's not trending upward like we want it to be. So this is a good thing. Maybe we'll spend some time on a webinar going over some of this and showing you how to use it. But it's very important that you learn to use these data points efficiently when you're deciding how you want to trade with the TT scanner. So it's very important to pay attention to the metrics over here and how you want to allocate your trading setups. All right, that's it for now. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube. Remember to go to Ment.com and create your account if you haven't already. It's really going to be a great next two or three plus years. I believe the markets are setting up for some really big moves. And if you're not following along yet, please do so because this is where we're going to make some really big money over the next three to five years before the 2028, 20, 30 peak sets up. All right, guys. Talk to you later.